So let's just demonstrate some kitty needling. Fortunately, this one is very entertained with his treats. This put in place, everything's fine. Notice he had some back issues starting there. Okay. Now what we don't want is him to lick a needle, so I'm allowing him to sit there, but he did notice that one. And sometimes with cats, what they'll do is uh, start to shake things out if they're a little bit itchy. So he's noticing those. Yes, you are. Yes, you are. It's okay though, isn't it? And sometimes they shake things out. Don't know. Here's another little tender and warmish area. And there we go. Yeah. Everything's still good. Kitty's purring. Now, if we were treating points on the limbs where he could lick it out, we wouldn't like that very much. So we'd probably it. Usually what you're going to want is to have help. I'm just showing this video here, showing how these are more safe points. Not that he couldn't whip his head around, but just my goal with this needling is just to show we use thin needles. We don't aggravate the kitty and we can use some massage and nobody's the worse for wear. Adjust the depth has available. Mm -hmm. It does seem like this is about the, uh, the number of needles that he's interested in for today. And once we're done with those and we can take them out, then this cat has asthma and he's on pred. And the areas that I've noticed the issue laden are in the cervical region and if he's got some uh, respiratory problems, then we would expect there to be some myofascial strain concomitance with the muscles of respiration. So working on the neck and the cranial thorax helps us relieve some of those muscles. We can work on the side of the thorax and the intercostals, the serratus, and help, help that chest area open up. We work on his pectorals get into the lung one area, lung two, cranial thorax. Right? See those. And not push him. Kitty done? Kitty's done.